Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera. Uh, I'm at my friend Pete Latour's garage, Latour's Auto. You guys have seen me here. I mean, I was gonna say a thousand times, maybe not that many, but pretty damn close. Um, it's great to be here. I just told Pete that I was like, man, I miss being here, man. But we had an opportunity to come down today. It's a van that he started looking at for us. It's a 2012 Econoline and it doesn't start and he's not getting fuel pressure. So that's kind of where Pete left off and is like, hey Paul, um, what can I check? And, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Caleb and I have an opportunity to come down on Monday. Today is Monday and we're here, excited to be here. It's been a long time. Yeah, so no, no fuel pressure, but right now I got nothing because why? Because the battery's dead. Thanks Pete, just like old times. Probably need to get a charger on this and not use this thing, but. Let's see if that'll crank it. Well, I at least got dash lights now. Cranking it. Sweet. All right, get a shot of the pressure gauge, Caleb. Ready? You hear it kind of wants to start. Um, I'm assuming we have spark right now probably not a good thing to assume. We should do a test before we start walking this path of no fuel pressure. I wanna make sure that I have spark because if I don't have spark, then I'm not attacking the fuel pump circuit. If I do have spark, then I am attacking the fuel pump circuit. So we can do a quick spray uh, carb clean in the intake, see if it starts. I'm not a huge fan of using starting fluid for diagnostic purposes because I have seen starting fluid, it's so volatile that I've seen engines without spark that it tries to start from compression pressures. That's why I prefer carb clean over starting fluid when doing troubleshooting. But this is what I have, I'm gonna use it. If it fires, then I'll, I'm gonna be comfortable with, with where we are. Let's see what that does. Cool, I, I'm good with that. That was a long enough run time to say to me, we most likely have spark. Let's continue on this fuel pump path. Let me ID the vehicle and then uh, see what codes we have. And then we'll go from there. 2012 Ford E Series 4.6. I did a little homework on this before we came down. I'm just gonna go the engine. I'm not doing a full code scan. Uh, what I found is this does have a fuel pump driver module underneath that uh, it's a variable speed fuel pump, electronic returnless system, and uh, these are known for cracking underneath, especially here in the rust belt. So the housing will split and the module gets messed up. Let's see what we have memory code wise. Immobilizer, ECM, calm error. That may be from the battery being dead. Uh, let's clear that and see if that returns. So nothing related to fuel. You don't wanna see immobilizer codes when you're dealing with a nose spark. All right, so P1000, that's from clearing it. Just cranking it over. Turning the key off. Turn the key back on. Let's turn the key off. Wait 10, 10 seconds or five seconds. Get a key cycle for those two trip detection codes. Crank it again. Go back, go to our memory codes. I just don't want to see that immobilizer code. Immobilizers don't typically disable the fuel pump. It would disable injectors, not the fuel pump itself, not on this design. Um, so I'm comfortable that we're not chasing an immobilizer issue, issue and the fact that that code didn't come back. Okay, so let's see what we have scan data wise as far as this fuel system goes, I believe we'll see a fuel pump duty cycle command from the engine computer to the fuel pump driver module, I think, I think. So I don't care about the fuel tank pressure transducer, that's gonna be for EVAP stuff. Fuel tank pressure, I don't care about that either, that's EVAP stuff. This should have a fuel pressure sensor on the fuel rail. I actually didn't identify that yet because it's possible that this is mechanical returnless and not electronic returnless. Let me just eyeball this for a minute. I don't see a fuel rail pressure sensor, which means that I might be wrong on everything I told you guys as far as the uh, 
fuel system goes on this. If this is electronic returnless with a with a fuel pump driver module, I would think that uh, we would have a fuel pressure sensor. We don't. So the rail on this side, not seeing one, and the rail on this side, I'm not seeing one. The diagram showed me a fuel pump driver module. So there were some discrepancies in the service info on the driver module. Um, they, they gave them two different names and I'm wondering if that's what's going on here is they're still using a driver module but it's not a dual speed pump. This is just a single speed pump, turn on, turn off. That makes sense why I'm not seeing a data parameter. But I am showing a fuel pump monitor percentage. The fuel pump percentage and the fuel so that I mean that's suggesting that it is so I'm get some discrepancies here all right the fuel system status that's open closed loop ignore that that one's not going to help us at all we're just going to look at these three guys just so you can see the engine rpm when I'm cranking it So I'm getting a 50% fuel pump uh, percentage command during cranking and from memory that's full command. The fuel pump monitor, that should be feedback. And my memory's a little off on this. Let's go underneath, that's what we gotta do. And um, actually let me pull a diagram and show you what we're dealing with. So on our fuel system overview we have an electronic returnless, we have a mechanical returnless which is what this looks like single speed because i don't see a fuel pressure sensor then there's a mechanical returnless that's a dual speed and that might make more sense because we are seeing the fuel pump commands on the scan tool because a single speed wouldn't necessarily have that let me see what it says fuel pump it does have a fuel pump control module fuel pressure regulator the fuel filter fuel supply line for vehicles with an IFS switch, the switch disables the voltage to the fuel pump. That's an inertia switch. In case of a collision, for vehicles without an IFS switch, this is interesting because I saw this on the diagram. I'll show you in a second. The fuel pump control module receives an event notification signal from the RCM. That's the restraints control module to disable the fuel pump in the event of a collision. And when Pete was talking to me on the phone about this, he's like, hey, Paul, I can't find the inertia switch on this. It's because there isn't one. I believe that this is us, um, that what we're dealing with is a mechanical returnless fuel system um, that ha it's a dual speed mechanical returnless, it means it has a fuel pressure regulator in the tank, but we still are controlling two speeds for the pump. Yeah, PCM commands duty cycle, the fuel pump control module, I'm reading on number four. Fuel pump control module reports diagnostic info to the PCM. That was the percentage we were seeing back. It says fuel pump control module controls voltage to the fuel pump based on a duty cycle request from the PCM. And that was the 50% number that I was telling you guys. Voltage for the fuel pump is supplied by the fuel pump control module relay. Fuel pump assembly contains fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, because it's mechanical. So what's the purpose of the dual speed? Fuel pump control, dual speed, mechanical. We're reading 75%. So I'm looking at fuel pump duty cycle command. Wait, which one is that? Fuel pump duty cycle output from the PCM. We were reading 75% and then 50%, I think. Invalid cycle. Fuel pump control module sends 20% duty cycle signal. The fuel pump is off. I was just trying to get you guys the purpose of the dual speed on this. 40% vehicles with event notification signal. Duty cycle indicates fuel pump control modules receiving an invalid event. 60% for vehicles with event notification signal. This duty cycle indicates the fuel pump control module is functioning normally. I want to go back to this again. I, I, I said we weren't going to scan the whole system. And I need to show you guys this diagram still. I know that. But I want to make sure. Oh, shoot. I got to turn this box back on. Little no-co box is nice for getting you out of trouble. It's not nice for long troubleshooting periods. So fuel pump percentage and fuel pump monitor. So I'm showing 60% right now. 60% command for vehicles with event notification signal. This duty cycle indicates fuel pump control module is functioning normally. 80% um, says 
duty cycle indicates fuel pump control model is detecting a concern with the secondary circuits. Let's crank this. So we'll watch that guy. Fuel pump percentage. Eighty percent. So we're reading an eighty percent signal cranking. Fifty percent on the. Oh, that's the monitor. Fuel pump percentage was fifty. Monitor was eighty. 80% indicates fuel pump control models is detecting a concern with secondary circuits. All right, uh, let me show you the diagram. There's a lot of stuff we could, we could spend time with on this. So pretty basic setup on this. The VPWR is power feed coming into this fuel pump control module. It says under rear vehicle near the fuel tanks. So we gotta go underneath. FPC is your fuel pump command. That's pin three, ground on pin four. FPPWR, that's our fuel pump power feed, right? That's directly to the pump, that guy. Our ENS, this is the one that I was looking at from home. I'm like, what is that all about? That is our, look what it goes to. It goes to the restraints control module. That's the signal that if there's an accident, um, they're gonna lock out this fuel pump based on the restraints control module signal, not an inertia switch. That's what that is. FPM, that's our monitored circuit. And then our FPRTN, that's our fuel pump ground. So that's your fuel pump ground, and that's your fuel pump power. And we're gonna go down to this module, do a visual, make sure it's not cracked. The other thing is let's make sure that we don't have any codes in our restraints control module. That'd be our airbag system. Let's make sure we got no airbag faults. So restraints system passenger disable indicator circuit open. That would be for you. That's, this, that's talking about this guy right here. Passenger seatbelt buckle pretensioner deployment control circuit open. That's going to be your the seatbelt on this side. Not worried about either of those two. And then battery circuit voltage below threshold. I'm not seeing any accident type uh, indicators here. Um, let's go do a visual on the fuel pump driver module in the back. Might be beating a dead horse. Like if I'm not teaching <clears throat> and showing you guys processes. I probably would have done the visual uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, let's go. Let's go underneath. I see a broken wire. This has been replaced before. See the green cruddies? Yeah. And then this broken wire here. Everyone's like, "Oh, you got a solder in heat shrink?" Yeah. Somebody did that, and this is good heat shrink too. Look, this was soldered, and there's the adhesive line heat shrink. This was repaired correctly. But even on, on you know, solder and, heat, and adhesive line heat shrink, you're still gonna have problems. Here in the rust belt, man, for sure. I am perfectly fine with the heat shrink style butt connectors we use. That's what we're gonna end up fixing it with. You know, I might, I might be barking up the wrong tree though. Let, let me make sure our wire colors are right. So violet green, yellow, orange, violet green, heavy one. Yellow, orange, yeah, we're on the right track. Black with a light green, that's this one. Yellow with a gray, that's the one that's broken. Yellow, gray is our fuel pump power. <laughs> and then the white, looks like white and brown's all messed up too. White, brown is my fuel pump monitored signal. Yeah, this is it. We'll be able to fix this. Oh, you know what I have? I have those seam rippers. Somebody's telling me, Dan, are you gonna get some seam rippers? I have some. Yeah, I bought you some. And, oh yeah, and every time I need to use them, you don't. I don't. <laughs> this is burnt. This wire is burnt. So something touched that fuel pump wire. Burnt it. Welcome to the Rust Belt of PA. These Southern boys, they watch our videos and they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe what you guys deal with. Let's see what wire that's. That got burnt. Oh, that's a shield. Okay, that's a shield wire. So we have a twisted pair. Yeah, the reason I know that's a shield is you see the plastic like sheathing around it? Yeah. I thought that that was a, um, I thought that was a melted wire. It's not, it's a shield. Um, it, it certainly could have, you know, touched that positive. I believe that's a pump power and pump ground. Uh, let's see, fuel pump power is yellow gray yeah 
and then fuel pump return or ground is white with a brown. Yeah, those are going to the pump. They have it shielded and those are both damaged. And that's why it got corroded. Something, uh, you know, at some point in time, nick that. I think it's always interesting though, electronically, that it's the power feed wires that will corrode. Generally not the ground. See, look at the look at the difference. I mean, look at the power feed, yeah. look at the ground. That's it just has to do with electrolysis and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing, but yeah. So we could we could just quickly attach these two and make this pump run. I'd like to do that and then we'll then we'll finish the repair. How's that? Yeah. This is going to be corroded. Generally, they'll corrode way into the harness. Oh, that doesn't look bad. That's kind of cool. I'll do a better job at this here in a few here, guys. Let's go inside the truck, see if we can start this. You ready? Yeah, just key cycle. We got 10 PSI already. Yeah. Yeah. get a shot of our our data fuel pump just watching these two data parameters on a normal crank 50% on the fuel pump percentage and our 60% monitored circuit that stayed the same that's that was a, a good indicator if you guys remember on the on the uh, service info all right so really not any reason to do any further checks down below as far as checking wiring signals. We have clear damage. Let's just go repair that and uh, wrap this thing up. I mean, maybe from a training standpoint, grabbing some of those signals would be beneficial, um, but there is no connector down there. It's already been cut off and I would have to hook each wire and to hook each wire, then I'm introducing moisture, and I know you guys don't like that. I don't either, especially here in the Rust Belt. Um, I don't mind doing that as long as I seal them up when I'm done. The problem with that is I don't have any liquid tape with me. My liquid tape dried out, so I have to get some more. So in this particular scenario, I'm not doing it. Um, we need to just repair the wiring and, and be done with it. Okay, so that's the plan. Would it be more risky to like pierce holes back there because there's clearly already like an issue with oh yeah I, the water. Be, yeah absolutely because of the location caleb was just asking me is it more risky poking holes it is but it always is when you're under the car and we do it all the time um in the case of no connector you don't have a choice if you're going to confirm a faulty fuel pump driver module you have to check inputs you have to check powers and grounds and you have to check controlled signals to the pump all of those things would require in this circumstance a hook tool and, and poking hole so I, I don't mind doing that but you gotta seal them up when you're done and i just don't know that it's really necessary in this circumstance um I, i'm wavering for a training video purpose i'm wavering on that but anyway uh let me get some butt connectors and stuff out of my truck and let's fix what we got down here so we're gonna fix these and some of you might be wondering what this extra wire is right here all I can tell you for sure is the dark or the black with the green wire, which is what this one is too, the heavier gauge one is your fuel pump module ground. So I'm guessing this is an extra ground for something else that is not being used or, or that's where the shield went. I bet you, I bet you the shield went right there. Yep. Yep, that would make it a shield. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it says no color available, NCA. However, you see right here, this black green, um, that's, what it, that's what it goes to. It's a shield and that's where that goes. It's nice and corroded too for us, which kind of sucks, but that's what it is. Yeah, this is pretty bad, but that's okay. We'll use it. So we'll fix the shield first. This actually was a good repair, whoever did this. Probably Ford. Those all look good, I'm fine with that. So I don't normally like to double, like you got a connector here and I'm gonna put another one here. The problem is I don't have a choice. I have to double it up because I don't have enough wire to, to stretch all the way into here and it's gonna be a lot harder to work. So I'm just gonna work with what I have here. This will be fine. 
It just got nicked by something. Maybe a stone, hard to say. I don't know why anyone would wanna, wanna solder and heat shrink. <laughs> to each his own. I've been real happy with our, our heat shrink style crimp connectors. We're gonna cut this and fix it too, this ground. Can you see the adhesive come out of these yeah. on the end? Yeah. This end probably maybe shows it better right here. All right, that's what you want. You're doing undercar stuff like this. You gotta use the adhesive line stuff, you have to. All right, so now what I wanna do is tape all this back up. So Pete does not have any liquid tape or nail polish. And given that situation, I'm not gonna poke holes down here, guys. I can't do it. I have to seal them up, especially when we're when we're down in this area. Um, it would be cool to do that on a theory situation and talk a little bit more about how this works. But in this circumstance, I, I just can't do that for the customer just for a training purpose video. Um, so I'm just gonna tape this up. My apologies on that front. See, I am responsible. All you non-pokers out there are like, you should never poke holes. You're right, it can be bad, but as long as you are sealing them up when you're done, you'll be fine. Science. Are you giving yourself a smaller Yes. I had a viewer teach me this. He said to use a socket, and I've done it, and it's pretty sweet. A socket would be even better. Yeah. It would be in this circumstance. I just screwed myself. This isn't going to work. <laughs> uh, I need to wrap that around, dude. <laughs> socket it is. <laughs> I did. You thought you were clever. <laughs> So I'm using Tessa tape right now. This stuff's really good. Like you can't even rip this stuff with your finger. You have to cut it. I tried ripping it with my teeth once and it hurt. Yeah, you can't. You have to cut it. This this is much better tape for for the harshness of this area. Yeah, I had a viewer send it to me. He sent me a bunch of them. So if, if, it, if that particular viewer is still watching me, he sent me all these rolls of Tessa tape and and all these zip ties with like ones that are meant for um, like anchoring wiring harnesses and stuff. Really, really cool that that person would do that. I, I apologize, I don't remember your name. So thank you, I'm still using it. Um, actually, as I'm thinking about this fuel pump control module, as far as um, troubleshooting these go, I have some fuel pump control module videos on, on electronic returnless systems on Fords. Even though this one's mechanical, very, very similar in the diagnosis. So I'll make sure I link some videos in the description of this one for other fuel pump control module videos that I've done that'll help some of you guys. You need a little bit more info on, on this kind of stuff. All right, just one more shot of it cranking, starting. Sweet. So it's a good lesson on, uh, if anything, you get a car like this in, has no fuel pressure, you spray starting fluid in it, and it, it starts so you know that you got spark and everything else, you start attacking the fuel pump circuit. It's always, always a good thing to do your checks at the pump. Right underneath, pull up a diagram, see what you're dealing with. You would have caught this right away, just like we did. So don't be in a hurry, slow down to speed up. Remember that, do your checks, pays off in the end. Guys, thanks for joining us. Don't forget about the links I'll put in the description as well as in the little eye icons, depending on the device you're watching the video on. And I'll put some other stuff in here on some other electronic fuel pump systems that we've done. And um, yeah, that's it, we're done. Thanks for joining us, see you next time.